Hey physics peeps, we're going to go over period and frequency. And this is the tricky part with uh, this unit, is knowing how to find the period and frequency. We are, you already went over kind of what they are. Period is time for one complete cycle. Frequency is the number of cycles per second. And the students that do really well in this unit, they know what these definitions are, and <clears throat> they can start figuring things out from there. Because really the key is for a period, it's the time for one complete cycle. This one complete cycle is the key. Because if you can identify one cycle, you know what the period is. And then you can use, uh, figure out the frequency in a couple of different ways. One way is an equation that's given to you on quizzes and tests. This period equals 1 over f. Period is the t because period is a time. And then the frequency, it's lowercase f, and that's kind of it. Um, but there are some other equations that you can kind of get from these uh, definitions. When we say a period is time for one complete cycle, it's kind of like time per cycle. It's kind of like this. And so if these equations are useful to you, feel free to write them down. Uh, and I would recommend, write them down. Write them down anyways. Um, because they're how you figure out what period and frequency are and what it is. And um, you'll see how that works out. We're going to go over three different uh, types of problems. You need to be able to identify period and frequency from a graph, from a data table, and from a description. And here's how you do it. And so here's a graph that shows a position versus time. It's a wave that's going back and forth, up and down, and it's happening in certain amounts of time. Here's your position on the side and time's on the bottom. And we're talking about period and frequency, you're concerned about the time. But really the easy part is figuring out the period. And if you know what period is, it's the time for one complete cycle. And if you know that, then you can start to figure it out. You just need to identify what this one cycle is. You can do that a couple different ways. Remember, one cycle is when it starts to repeat itself. So if it starts here at the bottom, one cycle would be when it gets back to the bottom. <clears throat> and then it'll start going up and down again. And so one cycle is right here, from here to here. And, and that is, the uh, it will also tell you the time for that one cycle. That is the period. And so we get 0.5 seconds. And... You could get that period in a couple different ways too. So it doesn't have to be from bottom to bottom. It could be if you started at the top, one complete cycle would be when you get back to the top. But when you end up looking at uh, that, the time for that one cycle is still 0 0.5 seconds because it went from 0.25 to 0.75. It's 0.5 seconds. Um, so, <clears throat> couple different ways. One way that you got to watch out for is if you end up using the middle points as your reference, we call them the nodes. It's not from middle to middle. This is only half of a cycle. The cycle has to be in the same position and be going in the same direction. It's coming up here at, from the middle. When you get here, though, it's coming back down. One cycle would be when it actually gets to this middle point and it's coming back up. And so you would have to figure out the time from there to there to figure out one cycle. That's kind of it. And, but that's period. Frequency is then one divided by the period. And so it's, if we know what the period is, it makes it easy. One divided by 0.5, we end up with two. Our frequency ends up being two. But the unit for this, you need to know it, it's hertz. You can abbreviate it this way or you could write it out hertz this way. Um, and those are our two answers. So that's how you find period and frequency on a graph. I'm going to show you one other here really quick. So if we need to find period and frequency, you have period. It's time for one cycle. And that's the key. If I can find one cycle on here, I could do this. It starts here. But if remember, if I get to this middle point, that's not one cycle. That's only half of it. It has to be in the same position and be going the same direction. This is one cycle because then it starts to repeat itself and repeat itself. 
there's like three different waves here, or three different cycles that are shown. The time for one of the cycles is just from beginning to end. You can measure it from here to here, and it's 0 0.6 seconds. So our period, it's 0 0.6 seconds. You can get that same number if you end up measuring from here to here, and that's fine. And because uh, it takes 0 0.6 seconds to get from 0.6 to 1.2, either way. And, and then find the frequency. Doo -doo 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 -doo. is one divided by the period. So if I do one divided by 0.6, I end up with this, oof, one divided by 0.6. I end up with a long string of numbers and that's okay. You're gonna get some uh, fractions in here and that's all right. So you could do one of two things. You could either leave this as one divided by 0 0.6. Some people just like doing that, that's fine. And Hertz, or you could say its uh, frequency is 1 over 1.67 or 1.6 repeating, however you want to do that. That's okay. Either of those answers is actually good. And, but we'll just do this. And here's our answers. And that's how you find period and frequency off of here. Looking at something different, you'll have to get it from data. And you'll, have, you'll see stuff like this, where it shows the position and times. But it goes with this picture, too. So the ball that rolls back and forth along a ramp, the times are recorded uh, for when it reaches positions A, B, and C. And <clears throat> we have to figure out period and frequency. But again, period, it's the time for one cycle. And, and the key is finding one cycle. So what is this stuff even saying? Well, in the table, it starts with position A. That means that the ball starts here. M, and the ball rolls to B, to C, back to B, and then back to A. And then it's kind of going back to B, back to C. It's just going back and forth this way and uh, that. So it's kind of, or it's a lot like a pendulum in a clock that's swinging back and forth. And it starts at A. But the key is where's one cycle? One cycle is when the pos or cycle starts to repeat itself. Well, if it starts here at A, the cycle won't start to repeat itself until it gets back to A. And because it goes A, B, C, B, A, and then it'll start over B, C, B, A, uh, all that kind of stuff. So, <clears throat> so here's one cycle. And the time for that one cycle is the period, and that's at 1.60 seconds. That's the period. Finding the frequency, it's one over the period. So we do one over 1.6, and if you do that, one divided by 1.6, you end up with this for your answer. And that's okay, you can have decimals. 625, your answer is hertz. So that's period and frequency on that one. And if we look at another example, this one is with a pendulum that swings back and forth. And it's very similar. It uh, tells you the position and the times, and it starts here at A. But again, when we talk about period, it's the time for one cycle. And it won't complete one cycle until it actually gets back to A. The time for that is 1.2 seconds. That's the period, 1.2 seconds. Boom. Frequency is 1 divided by the period. So we have 1 divided by 1.2. And we'll end up with uh, 1 divided by 1.2. This. I have a long decimal, and that's okay. So we get 0 0.833, or 83 repeating. That's okay. So we get 0.83 repeating, and it's hertz. And that's how you find it off of the data table. Now to actually figuring out from the description, this is where it gets a little tricky because it doesn't give you a picture and it doesn't give you a, a numbers straight out. You're going to have to figure out these little pieces. 
But again, the key, if you know what these are, period, you need to figure out the time for one cycle. Here it says a pendulum takes 20 seconds to swing back and forth 10 times. This is telling you the time for one cycle. This is the time that's for 10 cycles. So if I want to know for one cycle, well, to figure out the period, here it's pretty easy. I could take something like 20 seconds and divide it by the 10 cycles. And it'll tell me that it takes two seconds for the one cycle. Or just 20 divided by 10. It's two. The period is two seconds. And the frequency is then one divided by that period. Or one divided by two. And you get 0 0.5. Hertz. And the tricky part is when you get into something like this. And guitar string vibrates back and forth when it's plucked. It completes 500 cycles in 1.5625 seconds. And we have to figure out period and frequency. But again, if you know that period is time for one cycle, you got to figure out one cycle. This is telling you 500 cycles you need to figure out the time for only one of them. You could take that 1.5625 seconds and divide it by 500 cycles. And here, you're going to get a really small number, and that's okay. 5625. Oops, 1.5625. Divide by 500. You end up with something like this. And, and that's a, it seems like a really small number, which it is. The period is telling you the time for one cycle. And for a guitar string to swing back and forth once is a really small amount of time. It takes 0 0.003125 seconds for it to swing back and forth once. That's the period. To figure out the frequency, it's one divided by the period. So we have <clears throat> one divided by 0 0.003125. If we do that, divided by 0 0.003125, we end up with this, and it's 320. So when we talk about things that vibrate back and forth really fast. Frequency is actually a nicer number to use because we can kind of understand what it means. This is saying that it vibrates back and forth 320 times every second that goes by. And it's a little easier to understand than the period where it's like, well, that string takes uh, 0.003215 seconds in order to swing back and forth once. So period, frequency, they're kind of used in different cases. But that's how we solve it out for uh, graphs, for data, and for descriptions. If you know what period and frequency are, you'll do well, and people do well with them. So I encourage you, make sure that you know what they are, and <clears throat> feel free to come back to this. And these are really the things that you got to know. And uh, period, time for one cycle. Frequency, it's the inverse of that. You can use this equation that's giving you on uh quizzes and tests. These equations, they're kind of nice to know uh, and nice to have if you're still stuck on stuff, but that's kind of the gist of it. So hopefully this was helpful. Make sure you contact your uh, teachers if you still have questions. Have a good day, everybody. See ya.